In today's session, I'm gonna take you through the five key regrets, which is a book written by Brony War. I'm gonna put the link below, a wicked book. So this is gonna be a book review. So if you like reading or you wanna read more books and you want the quick approach, the faster way, then subscribe, lean down on that, subscribe to the channel. And I'm gonna share with you quick ways in which you can utilize the information in these books so I can save you the time so you don't need to read them. I read them and I can demonstrate the great stuff from it so you can collect the best bits so you can stand on my my shoulders and see further ahead that's what the life of journey is all about find people that are doing things ahead of you and how can you borrow those 10,000 hours it was Malcolm Gladwell who wrote outliers which was a super famous book that it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill the question whose 10,000 hours can you borrow to speed up your process so I'd like to help you move further forward as always my name is Ed JC Smith founder of the champion Academy where we bring out the champion inside of you so you can live life on your terms. Lean down and subscribe. Don't play hard to get. So The Five Key Regrets is a beautiful book. I took my parents through it because I wanted to like build some video footage of, of doing it with them so I could have it for later on when they die. Morbid, I know. These Five Key Regrets, it was written by this lovely lady called Brony War who was stuck in a job, hated her job. She was a banker and she just wanted to live life on her terms, do the things that she wanted to do. She made a decision to cut from her, her job and to go and really find herself, find her passion, all of those sorts of things. So what happened is that, uh, first of all, she had no work. Work. So she was staying with people and asking, you know, favors and her, her, her friends to see if they could look after her. And she she kind of found um, some new opportunities to do some work in some bars. Anyway, and someone recommended that she could look after some people in a nursing role. She wasn't a qualified nurse, and she told them that. And she ended up looking after people that were just on their way, as in they had like 12 weeks left. And she started to really connect with this idea. And so as the the book goes along, it's her journey of her collecting her thoughts about the fact that before people died they had these moments of clarity these moments of I didn't live how I wanted to live and she collected them under the five key regrets and I'm gonna share with them today so that you can use them because these moments of clarity at the end of death the things that we need to avoid because if that's the case that people are having these immense amounts of clarity then if we can take these key moments right now and utilize them in our life straight away then we can avoid the massive pains in life so that becomes like the key factor to life if we can really design our life the way we want it if we want to live life on our terms then by knowing these five key regrets is going to be the ultimate compass i'm always checking in on these and i've got one for sure that i'm that i'm working on that i'm aware that i am nurturing to make sure that i'm on track so i don't die tomorrow and think shit i didn't do the things i wanted to do the number one that's constantly gone over and over again is the highest one of all and that's the one I'm gonna share right at the end. Okay, but before that, I, I did my, my parents and I thought my dad would suffer from at least five of them. However, he was like, I only have one. His one was not spending enough time with friends and family. Like, think about it. When you get to the end, you're not gonna think, shit, I wish I'd spend more time you know, at work or more time with people that I didn't like. So I want you to start taking this. Are you spending enough time with your family and friends? Only you can answer that, right? And some of you, I get it. Like, you don't wanna spend time with your family and friends because your family are very negative. I've got a video for that check it out it's up there okay so you can help and, and deal with them because the thing is you can't cut your family out whether you like it or not they're your family right learning how to deal with them is the key but that was one of the, the main regrets the second one and she talks about like these beautiful stories for example one of the ladies in the story that she was looking after she was like really bitter really grumpy to be around and her regret at the end of it was the regret of not allowing herself to be happy happiness again is a choice that you have to let you have to let go of being a miserable fucking bitch you have to be you have to let go of being difficult you have to be you have to let go of those things and i appreciate it. look we're in the uk we're full of people that are miserable and complain a lot because the weather sucks but you have a choice right you live in the uk yes the weather sucks if you haven't been it's consistently gray and in the middle of summer when you think it's going to be a great day bang it starts raining it's an island it's it's unpredictable. However, the fact is the UK is one of the highest grossing business economic markets in the world today. People from all over the world come to live it because it's a land of opportunity. And so you have a choice to look at the bad versus the good. And it's up to you, all right? You can let go of being miserable. You can let go of judging people. You can let go of being depressed just because of something, etc. And you can choose happiness. Now, happiness is, is something that can be trained as well. I've got videos on that as well if you need that. But that was a key regret. The third key regret, which 
which I think I have to be conscious of is I wish I hadn't have worked too much. People say, Ed, you work a lot. I don't really think I work a lot compared to how I used to work back in the day. However, I am conscious of that. Like, I don't want to be that person that when you come to the end, you say like, I wish I hadn't spent so much time at work because the difficulty is, is that I love what I do and I live and breathe it. So I don't see it as work and I see it as, as who I am. And when you are what you do, how do you separate that? That's the question. I'm always open. You know, how do you find that? If you're an entrepreneur, you can't switch off that entrepreneurial mind. I'm always thinking of like, how can we grow? How we can make a difference? How can we get the message out? But at the same time, I am not always searching for more. I'm super appreciative of what I have. And I'm very, and I'm very basic in my daily practice. Like I'm not looking to accumulate hundreds of millions. I, I, I think that's totally possible. And I think that's a great thing. And you should do that if you want to do that. And you can do that if you want to do that. Buy the things that you want to buy and then start thinking about what sort of difference can you make in the world? That is a beautiful concept. So, you know, wishing you haven't worked enough. And the story about that was this guy. He basically worked his whole life, he was a really successful business owner. And his wife was always talking about how they want to go traveling together. And then the moment, like she says, like, you know, we, we haven't got much time left. And he says, look, one more year and we'll do it. And in that year, he gets cancer and dies. Like, you've got to understand your time is not endless. Your time is limited. And, and that's what I, 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 I re-listen to this book a lot because it reminds me of what's really important in life. And when you're faced with death, when you're faced with someone close to you passing, it reminds you what is important in your life. Every day, if you're deciding what is important, then you won't get caught up with the stupid stuff. And it's all stupid. The little bickerings, the things that you're worrying about, anxiety, the stresses, the little strains. Forget it. Focus on what's important in your life. At number four, to be true Truly expressive of how you feel, emotion, letting out your emotion, actually saying what you want to say. And I think, oh, so many people, so many guys that I know that just because they're a guy, they, you know, I was taught, you know, emotions are weak and emotions are wrong and you shouldn't. And so you lock them in. And I think that's men's biggest weaknesses today. And that's the reason that men's suicide keeps on increasing. And I think it will only increase. And so when you really truly get that, to be emotionally expressive of how you feel, for a lot of men and for women, it's so locked down, they put it into a space where they don't. Don't even consider how that feels. Nothing is more important than how you feel on a daily basis. It's the most important thing that you can ever experience is, is, is practicing, doing your inner work and practicing expressing how you feel. And number five, living in your truth, living life on your terms, doing the things that you want to do. And so many of the stories in the book are people that, you know, have been, have, have lived a whole life doing something because someone else told them what to do. And so what, what I really want you to get from this video is, is to ask yourself the question would you live life differently if you knew you were going to die tomorrow would you would you be different would you express yourself in a different way would you search for, for a different meaning to your life would you worry about the things that you worry about on a daily basis would you put so much time and negativity into something that doesn't really matter the question is you only have one life therefore really make that life a beautiful life a masterpiece something that you are really proud of it's okay to make mistakes it's okay i'm not here telling you i, I am some sort of perfect individual i've I've made many mistakes. However, I continually move forward, increase my awareness, do the best I can to make sure that I, I'm not offending people as I move forward, make a difference and live every single day present to the fact that tomorrow could be your last day. And so therefore have no regret. Therefore do the things that you want to do. Say the things that you want to say. Go out and, and speak to the people you want to. Go and ask them on a date. Go over to that person. You never know. They were probably waiting for you to come over anyway. All right. And if they say, here's the deal, you walk over and you say, hey, I saw you over there. Just wanted to say hi. And if they tell you to go, you know, if they go and tell you to do one, then you saved yourself a lot of time because they're not the person that you want to spend your time with. All right, that's it from today's session. I want you to cherish this life that you have, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe in God or transformation or the universe or whatever that divine light is for you in this moment, in this body that you're experiencing right now, you'll never have it ever again like it is right now. I don't care how old or young you are, wherever you are, what's happened, what hasn't happened, what's been done or hasn't been done. Now is the moment to be present, to live to the fullest, to your utmost potential. It's a pleasure as always. Make sure you lean down on that. Subscribe. I look forward to connecting with you and helping you live life on your terms. My name is Ed J.C. Smith, founder of the Champion Academy, where we bring out the champion inside of you. Till next time, no matter what happens, never give up on those dreams and I'll see you soon.